Good. Now. <laughs> Is there anything else that needs to be done or can I start yelling at you? You can start yelling. Well, according to this, Adam Moore, you can say whatever you want. Well, hello then. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you get rid of that? What? Eddie, what? All right, and Adam, unless you feel like yelling at me in the middle of the class, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna tilt the camera down. We had a request last night to tilt it downwards. And sooner or later, ah, got it. I'll get good at this one day. Be silent. I, I don't know how to turn it on. Like when you turn this thing on, there's gonna, there's gonna be like a 10 minute leeway of me just talking shit forever. Because I have to turn it on, I have to do 30 things before we can even start a class. We can't no, be that's why I think if I disable the waiting room, you can just come in automatically. Did you disable the waiting room? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're early. Woo! Four rolls, back to world, steady as Ah! Come on, keep the work and stay on the camera so they can see. Come on, forward roll, break fall, stay on the face. Good. Now, for the same part, we turn around to do it on this one. Four of them. Stay on the base. Yes. I'm going to go over some more detail on that stuff. Let's do that a couple more times. Again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow motion. Super slow. My head is spinning. Do it. Let's do it again. Yeah. That's not bad. So he's You don't get to pick his side and be good at her falling. As good. All right. And then, and then. this side is trickier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit trickier. Let me uh, quickly demonstrate that. So again, this is the basic fundamentals class. And three of the most basic fundamental things that you're going to have to get good at, whether you like it or not, forward rolls, backward rolls, break falls, standing in base. That's technically two things. And hip escapes. Now, I was complaining about hip escapes in the last class. So I should go ahead and show that. But just quickly, if you have a bad side for falling, just practice. Practice makes perfect, okay? Now, start on the knees. Two hands. I'm gonna pick a side. I'm gonna go with this side. My left hand's gonna stay in line with my right. The other right, left, 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 left. <laughs> and then one palm. Left hand, left knee. Take your right hand, come underneath your legs and have active toes. That means my toes are able to push off the ground. I'm going to put my ear on my shoulder, let my shoulder touch. Whatever leg I'm looking at, that's the one that's going to go straight. I'm going to reach for those toes and keep my chin tucked. Okay? Now from here, I roll over my elbow. I start to sit up and now we can stand in base. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite side. Okay, I start on my knees. My right hand is in line with my right knee. My left hand is going to go underneath whatever leg I'm looking at. It's going to be the one that straightens out. Did I almost kill you? No. <laughs> Reach for those toes. Keep your chin tucked. Knee to the ceiling. All over the elbow to come up. Now, if I do that from standing, <laughs> it's adorable when you do it. It's like a panda going hey, down a It's not offensive. That's it's what a panda. the cult leader said. What? Yes. Yeah. Stop okay. watching cult documentaries. <laughs> Thanks, man. Stop watching the cult documentary stuff. You're a dumb. Shut up. I'm a human being. <laughs> I'm teaching a class. We're going to start here. From here, I'm going to put my hands together. Okay, so now when I'm standing up, I'm not able to kind of put my hand on the ground. What we're going to do is we're going to build a wheel. Okay, so if I put my hands together, I'm going to point my elbow to the ceiling. So my right elbow is going to the ground. So imagine we're going to do like a bit of a wheel. Okay, I put my hands on the ground. So now it's my hand, my elbow, my shoulder. And I slap the ground. She's on an angle just quickly. So now if I don't feel comfortable just kind of diving in, I build a frame. Okay, my right leg's going to go forward. My right arm's gonna go forward, elbow high. I put my hands together, and from here, when I start to crouch down, my hands touch the floor, my elbow touches the floor, my shoulder touches the floor, and I build a frame. Cool. Yeah, there you go. So you can break it down bit by bit. I'm doing the opposite side now. So I've got my left leg forward, 
left elbow forward, put my hands together. I start to squat down, hand, elbow, shoulder, brain, roll over. Okay? Let's see you do that. With the... Yeah, do the adult one. So face the camera. Show off. Yes. 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 Yeah, you right. cool. You're in the third tier um, Satan level design. <laughs> what are they called? What's the cult called? Uh, next year. They're <laughs> <laughs> eighth level next year. Yeah. We have belts. We have belts. <laughs> We're starting. Oh. All right, so eventually we can start on the knees. Tuck the hand. We're basically making a very small wheel and we're building a frame. Then eventually, starting standing, kick a leg, build that frame, squat down nice and slow. You can move into that frame again. Then eventually, full buster keep. Yeah, so imagine I'm walking on a series, I trip. I'm not going to reach for anything to try and stop myself from falling. I'm going to get out of my own way. Okay, so I was picturing that. I was just <laughs> <laughs> so I've had a couple of instances where I've been hit by cars, and when I reach for the ground, it hurts later. Okay, now the other instance where I get hit by a car and I tucked and rolled, I lived. It works. It's a real thing. Then you have to worry about when you're sparring with somebody and you just, I don't know, you zig when they zag, you get thrown. Learn how to not land on your face, right? You can keep the fight going if you're not knocked out, which is what we're going to be talking about today when we talk about distance management. But let's continue with the warm up and I want to see backwards rolls. Yes! yes. <laughs> Uh, that was awful. Why? The other side, the other side is always hard. So, pause. I want you to turn your back to the camera just here. Slow motion start to sit the your right fall. Now, roll over your shoulder. <laughs> Some people have a little bit of trouble without momentum. We'll talk about that. That was good. Okay, so what I want from you when you do your backwards roll is to not necessarily have to use momentum, you can, but when you come up, don't come up using strength. Always use structure instead of strength. Now I'm going to go over another way of doing the rear break fall, but for now, my butt is going back like I'm looking for a chair, it's not going down, okay? It's going back, chin, it's not being Boom. From here, am I still on the camera? I'm bigger. Yes. From here, if I... <laughs> Just get your head out of your way. You can touch the ground with your hands and let that help you, okay? As you come over the top, from here, the leg that you're looking at is the one that stays up. I'm gonna do a little bit closer over here. From here, the leg that I'm looking at will stay up, okay? Now, I can come up on a knee. So imagine if I'm here, I always stand up. I'm gonna build a frame. My toes go out like a windshield wiper. My knee comes up like a reverse windshield wiper. And I'm in base again. Okay? So one more time. Rear brain fall. Oh, I look at the foot. I build a frame and I stay on top. Now, if I was to do on the opposite side, rear brain fall. Boop. I look at the foot. I'm going to build a frame and stay. Okay? Let's go again. That was, I mean, that's okay. That's okay. All right, uh, shift up. <laughs> that was not that bad. That was actually very good. Okay, so when we're doing a rear break fall, one common mistake that I'll see is people will do this <laughs> on their butt. Okay, what I want you to do, do me there, huddle up a little ball, uh, head towards the camera, please. Perfect. So now for me, actually, I'm going to get you a scoop in. Scoop in. Scoop Pause. Ball. Imagine I was walking backwards. And as I walk backwards, I run into something. Doop. Am I going to sit on that? No. I'm not going to do a break fall like this. What I want you guys to do, get a partner if you can, or you get a stack of clothes, I don't know. Get to here. 
Boom. When you get to here, your butt goes past. Now your chin's tucking up to do your brain fall. Here we are one more time. Again, start here, walk backwards. Boom. I touch something, my butt needs to find the ground. Now, from here, roll over, build your frame, stand up, Joe Pesci to the oh. All right, your turn. What? Shot in box. All right, you do it. <laughs> Angle. You have to go. Over here. I'm uh, walking. Oh, I see something. <laughs> yeah, that was awful. I could feel you sitting on me. That was shit. I want your butt Wait. to go past me. Well, Imagine there's a nice comfy chair over here. Okay. So when you hit, push your butt past me and slide it. No. And no. <laughs> Again, I want you to. It just might that you have a big old butt. I want it <laughs> way over here. I didn't see what you were doing. Sit your butt way past me. What? No. Oh. Good enough. Good enough. <sighs> I need students <laughs> so that I can have an instructor and then I can show them things. <sighs> so what I'm looking at, if you look at me, what I do, when I do this, <clears throat> I'm looking for a chair way back there. Way back there. Okay? So I'm going to the ball, stare at the camera. <laughs> so look up at the camera. When I do this, I'm not doing this. Yeah. And pushing. It's this. Way past you. My butt was over here. No, I did. <sighs> My legs are short. <laughs> Come on, you're doing your tiny short legs to do it. Push past. Yes. Yes. That was correct. That felt yes. Okay. Okay. No buttery panda. Okay, so your forward rolls, your backwards rolls, standing in base. Now, we can spend a half hour talking about standing in base in general, trust me, because there's a lot of hidden detail that most people don't teach. It's not just a dance move when I'm here, hand goes behind, I lift myself, and I stand, all right? When we do this, what I want you guys to focus on, you're going to put your hand behind you, put your hand up front. Right now, this is not base. If I was to cut an angle, this is still not base. I can be easily pushed over. What I want is I want your knee tight to the ground, your hips tucked up underneath you, okay? So now from here, this is solid. If I get pushed, if I have to bear weight, don't worry, we don't have to demonstrate this. I'm gonna teach this in a class eventually. But imagine it's just a dance move that I want you to get used to. Great fall. Tuck your elbow and roll over it. That's gonna be a much easier way for you to come up than pushing off the ground with your elbow. Hit Be lazier. Roll over your elbow, it builds a frame. You don't have to put any effort in, okay? My job is not to make you a warrior. My job is to make you lazy. The lazier you are, the better you're gonna be fighting. Now from here, boom. My hand goes behind my butt. This leg stays forward, this hand stays up. It doesn't have to reach, it doesn't have to cover. The middle is fine. Now, I wanna find base. So I'm gonna scoop my hip bone underneath me, okay? So I want this femur touching the ground, okay? This is a quick demonstration. You can slightly angle your toe, put two hands on the shoulder, slowly push, pause, relax, stand up straight. Don't push down, push me back from the shoulder. Yes, it's very easy to do. Push me back from the shoulder, yes. I'm sitting on the, the, the sphere of my buttocks. Now, if I do that, push back. Now I'm sitting on a frame, okay? It's no longer the ball of my butt where I can be moved. What I want is to click in place and be able to bear weight, okay? We'll talk about that later on. Now, when I'm here, I don't have my foot underneath. Just push me again. Don't get close to me. I need to have this leg free for attack, okay? So this leg is free, my butt swooped underneath. And I'm going to use this connection to the ground, this connection to the ground, to lift myself up. Put your hand and your foot together to stand up, okay? And then there's a whole bunch of different versions of that. What happens if you got a big old belt full of weapons? What happens if somebody's leaning on top of you? What happens if somebody kicks you in the face? What if so? There's a whole bunch of classes about that. But for now, forward roll, break fall, stand in base. So just FYI, I've been doing it for a year and I still suck, so don't feel bad if you 
Makes me feel really good as an instructor. Come on. Good Lord, tuck your elbow to your hip bone, roll over your elbow. Right. She's right, she's so soft. All right, scoot your hip up underneath you. Pause. Don't have your foot hanging out here. Tuck it here. Tuck your butt to this nose. Yes, put your weight forward in your shoulder. Pause where you are. How do you feel? Yes. Yeah, that feels pretty solid to me. Stand up. Dramatic stop. That was better than nothing. <sighs> better than nothing. That's what you get. All right. So, adding on to this. Yeah, today's class, we're going to be talking about distance management. The thing with jujitsu, nine times out of ten, you go into a school, you slap hands, you roll around the floor, and you end up upside down, and you hurt yourself, and it's awesome, it's fun. Cool. If you're learning jujitsu that way, that's one way of doing it. What I want you guys to worry about is slap hands. I'm a ninja. Slap hands. Don't get punched in the face. That's way more important than being cool, okay? If you get knocked out on your way to doing something cool, who wins, all right? What I want you to understand is the clinch and the timing for the clinch is more important than jujitsu, okay? Jujitsu is cool. You get to do all kinds of fancy moves, but come in jujitsu, not a thing, okay? If she gets knocked out on the way to jujitsu in, there's no jujitsu, all right? So what I want from you guys, when you're doing this, you're gonna have two hands distance to start with, and we'll talk about base. Perfect. Stay exactly where you are. If I was to find a fighting stance, okay? Even if it's old school Cambridge boxing, right? One leg's gonna be forward. Because if I stay like this, I don't have anything good back and forth. If I was trying to push a car up a hill like this, I'm not gonna be very useful. So I need to take a step back, okay? So the leg that's forward is gonna be the arm that's forward forever and ever and ever. It's known as a jab, okay? So this is my distance tool, right? So pause here. If I put my hand on my partner's hand, I can still get to her. My job is to do fine. Two hands distance, plus a finger. I, I thought you would believe in me by now. Two hands distance. Yeah, never. Stop flinching. Stop flinching. Okay, you can. You're safe. I'm relatively. relatively safe. All right, tell you what, let's turn this game down a notch. Her job is to hug me, okay? Right now, two hands distance plus a finger. This is perfect distance management. Right now, you're in a very safe zone where I can't get to you until I have to enter, okay? I'm gonna talk about stopping that later. For now, I'm gonna take my belt off. I'm gonna tie a knot at the end of my belt. That way, it's got a little bit of heft to it. And that way I can swing it, okay? So when you get a partner, if you've got some time, you're gonna time the clinch. We're gonna talk about base in a second. But right now, I take my belt, I fold it in half, and I tie a knot. From there, I'm gonna hold it halfway down, okay? So not all the way out, halfway down. And from here, when I swing, I'm just basically gonna hit myself in the butt, left and right, left and right. And it's your job to hug me without getting hit by the belt. Yes, yes, 100%. That's not hard, is it? Okay, that's not hard. You're doing good. Take your time, and I want you to hug me again without getting hit by the belt. Perfect, good timing. Okay, let's do that again. Yes, very good, okay. So now you're kind of getting used to the idea of not getting hit as you're coming in for what's known as the clinch, okay? So what you're doing is you're covering distance to manage the damage. If she was to come in, go ahead and come in. Ah. Probably don't come in. Okay, you have to time this. You have to get good. You have to get good at timing the clinch. Take your time. Yes, very good. All right, now from here, I'm gonna get a little bit more. A little bit more. It's slower, yes, good work. A little bit more distance, fantastic. Ah. ah, okay, that's getting a little bit weirder. Take a slide. 
Come on, you're an engine. Yes, good work. Okay, so we can practice timing the clinch. So normally in a class, in the classroom, you take your belt off and smack your partner. Around. Oh, huh. see, look at you, you're getting better already. It's a clinch drum. Okay, what we're going to add on to that is we're going to start to walk towards our partner. It's going to be a little bit harder with the, the, the camera right now, but let's say, come with me. Starting here, hold out your left hand. This is a perfect distance drill, okay? Stay where you are. You do not have to enter. I'm gonna walk towards you, and I want you to keep the distance away from me. Keep that distance. Keep that distance and clinch. When you're ready, yes, good. Okay, again, let's start back here. Keep the distance. Keep the distance. You clinch when you're ready. Clinch when you're ready. Yes, perfect. Okay, keep the distance. You're okay. Keep the distance. Don't let me touch you. Don't let me touch you. Keep the distance. Clinch when you're ready. Yes, perfect. Okay, so what I want to add on to this, we're not going to be using the belt anymore. We're going to find what's called fighting base. Okay, so if any of you have done uh, boxing or striking in the past, it's perfectly fine. If I was to shape up for boxing, I'm narrow, all right? If I'm narrow, that means I have a longer reach and there's less of you, uh, less of me to hit. And that means I have rotation in the hips for kicks and strikes. Perfect. When we start to do jujitsu, we don't want to be off of base, okay? So right now, I'm going to stand in front of me at two hands distance. Perfect. From here, if I was to shape up and she was faster than me, I want you to just step right here. Come close and give me a little bit of a push. Okay, if she decided she was gonna do a takedown or tackle me, that's bad for me, right? My job is to have a bit more base. Now it's gonna diminish my striking capabilities at times, but we can build on that later when we're advanced. But now I want you guys to understand the idea of, if I'm here, this is great for pushing a car up a hill, it shifts side to side, okay? Now, if I did this, Really good for side to side, but it shit back and forth. We need to find the middle of that, okay? So from here, if we put our feet together, if I was to point my toes out like a letter L, this is a little bit better side to side, a little bit better back and forth. If I take a big step out, it's good for side to side, shit back and forth. Same goes for this. We need to find the middle, okay? So imagine you're doing a deadlift or a squat. You put your feet just outside of your shoulders, nice and relaxed. From here, side to side, shift back and forth. If I was to push a car up a hill, same thing goes. Let's imagine we wanna make a square, okay? So if I take that step there, and that step there, the middle of those two is my base. I'm gonna turn my hips at whatever I'm fighting. I wanna be in the middle. I don't wanna be narrow. Don't want to be narrow. The middle. Let your knees sink and your hands stay up. Okay? We'll talk about flinch drills and don't touch my face later, but for now, this is called a fighting base. I'm going to try and keep my fighting base as somebody walks towards me by stepping and dragging. So if she walks towards me, I don't walk back and lose my base. When she steps towards me, I step and drag. Step and drag. Let's start back on the camera just a little bit. I want you to hold your left hand out. Two hands distance, the arm is forward, his leg is forward forever and ever and ever. We're gonna find that fighting base, not too narrow, not too wide, the middle. My partner is gonna hold that hand out and I can start with my hand held out to begin with as well. She takes a step forward. I keep this distance, okay? If she takes a step forward and I lose that, I'm gonna get hit, come back to this. A bit more, pause. Fighting base, left hand out. Perfect. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to time the clinch. We'll do this a couple of times. Step forward, one, two, three. I'm going to step towards you. One. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're doing yeah. great. I thought oh, it's a little great. bit close. <laughs> yeah, okay. Two, <laughs> three, and hit you. You step towards me. One, two, Three, perfect. Okay, you can do that back and forth with your partner and get used to the idea of distance management. 
because right now, this area we refer to as the green zone. This is the safe zone, okay? They're too far away to do damage, and we got just enough uh, distance to run away, okay? What we don't want to be is the red zone. We get knocked out by accident. It's a boxer's chance. Doesn't matter if you're really good at striking. If I'm in the bad area, I can get clipped by accident, okay? You can get knocked out very easily by accident. So what I want from here, on camera please, closer, 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 a lot closer, a lot faster, pause, relax. This is much safer than this, okay? This is much safer than this. This is much safer. Then what we're looking to do is put them on the ground, okay? Once they're on the ground and we're on top, we have the ability to strike. We don't have to worry so much about them, okay? So again, we can start with the belt, back and forth, don't have to move, you just time it, you get hit, you got hit by a belt, you're fine. You're not, you get hit by a belt, you're fine, okay? Then eventually, I'm moving towards you and you have to time not getting hit by a belt. Then, sooner or later, we find our fighting base. We find the middle, and I'll be very, very anal retentive about this later, yelling at you guys about how you need to protect your base. From here, we keep our distance, three steps, three, one, two, three, three to you, one, two, three, pause, walk, walk, further away, yes, so keep your hands up the first few times that you're practicing, now sooner or later, we'll be practicing with no hands, and on the third, you're going to cover and clinch, so imagine she's swinging the belt, you just want to hug her, so now, step towards me, one, two, on the third, cover your face, your forearms touch the chest, hug. Don't overthink it. Later on, we can overthink all class long. What I want from you, cover the pretty stuff, touch your forearms to the chest, okay? So again, if she goes to touch my face, cover, touch the chest, hug. That's all for now. You're gonna do that to me, we're gonna step over here. Pause, two hands distance. We're gonna take it nice and slow. On the third step, cover your face and hug me. One, two, three. Perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Let's do that again. Keep your base this time. Step and drag. Two hands distance. One, two, three. Good time. When you cover, don't just do this. What I want you to do, set your elbows together and put your hands on your head. That's enough for now. We can talk about all kinds of other ways of clinching. Right now, tighten that up. Good, you can see through that, can't you? Yeah. Okay, that's only for a second. Put your forearms on my chest. Perfect, that's all I want. And then you use them as windshield wipers to hug me. 100%. One more time, sorry to go over here. Two hands distance, find your base. I'm gonna take a step towards you, what? What? One more. Yes, good work. Okay, now this time, not on three, you clinch when you feel comfortable. Nothing wrong with that. That was very good. Okay, so that'd be the standing portion of the class. We'll be grabbing our partners, practicing and drilling constantly forever and ever and ever. Sooner or later, we're gonna have to add in strikes. We're gonna have to add in kicks. We're gonna have to add in counters and takedowns, and there's a million things to add. But if I was going towards her to do jujitsu and she just uh, poked me in the eye, it's gonna be hard to do jujitsu. It's an accident. So you have to get good at covering the distance, managing the damage, okay? This distance is damage. Now, let's talk about damage. I'm gonna show you guys how to do an Americana. Now the Americana is, it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a myth, right? When you talk about doing the Americana from Mount, Every black belt in the world looks at you like, you can't do that, that's not a thing. It'll never work. Trust me, it's a real thing. You can learn how to do an Americana from mouth at high levels. It just has to be taught correctly. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the basic application of what's called the Americana lock. It's a shoulder rotational lock going in this direction. I'm gonna aim this camera down for more detail on this one, okay? So Lisa, I want you to scoot to the middle of the camera, please. And lay down on your back. Yeah, I'll move it. Uh, I mean, perfect. Stay there. All 
right? We can get you a blue D and make it easier for teaching. Yeah. Actually, you know what? To make it easier for teaching, I'm going to take, yeah, we're fine. There's some good shadow. Right. So first off, we're going to go over the basic application of what's called an Americana lock, all right? It's a shoulder rotational lock. From here, start with your partner in the mouth, and you're going to pin the wrist down to the ground, right? Elbow in the neck, monkey grip on the wrist, make a shovel to come underneath and lock it on. From here, I'm going to gently lift the elbow and drag back. When my partner's in pain, they're going to physically tap me or say tap. Perfect. Okay. So again, what I'm doing, I'm picking a side, I'm pinning the arm to the ground for now, just for the basic application. From here, my elbow wants to be snug against the neck, okay? Monkey grip on the wrist. I'm never holding onto the wrist with what's called a C clamp, like a letter C. If I hold on like a letter C, straighten your arm, I'm gonna lose that grip every time. If I hold on with a monkey grip, yes. What I mean is no thumb, just kind of hooked. So from here, my elbow is tight against the neck, monkey grip on the wrist, straighten your arm out. It should be a little difficult to do. Now from here, I'm gonna come underneath and grab my own wrist. I'm coming in from behind the elbow, up around the tricep and bicep. When I do that, I'm always gonna use a shovel. So make that like muscle memory, always give them a palm up, like a scoop to get the hand in. Otherwise you end up with fingers like mine. Trust me, you don't want that. You're going to have a monkey grip, elbow on the neck, make a shovel to come underneath. Now from here, grab your wrist. Once you've grabbed onto the wrist, everything is locked on. You don't have to get so weird with this where you're rotating, 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 nothing, no. Bend things the wrong way and they will break sooner or later. The key here is that you're lifting the elbow while you keep their hand on the ground. Slowly drag it back. Remember your partner needs to tap. One more time. Pin your partner's wrist. Monkey grip, elbow. Shovel underneath. Monkey grip on your own wrist. Push the knuckles to the ground, lift the elbow to the ceiling, and slowly drag backwards until your partner taps. We're going to do that to me, please. your elbow in the neck, nice and snug. Monkey grip, shovel, rotate. Now gently lift and pull back, 100%. Now you don't have to hold on for dear life to see how long you can last in this. Just tap when it's slightly uncomfortable. Now the trick here is we need to learn how to apply this, okay? So a basic application is one thing. How do we lock? Let's scoop this way, please. Scoop back just a little bit towards me. Pause. Down. If I get here and she wants to push me and she wants to shove me and do all kinds of terrible things to me, how do I get the hands to look like this? <laughs> it's a very easy answer. <laughs> all you gotta do is look at them funny. Yeah, that's it, just smack them, okay? You don't have to do any kind of fancy stuff to get those hands up. Smack them in the face, okay? And if you don't want to smack, by the way, don't punch somebody. These things are a joke. You make a fist and you punch something like a bowling ball with hair, you're just gonna break it. Use your palms and just slap them around, okay? The hands come up. And basic setup, there we go. Now the hands are up, pause here. What I want you to understand is that this is not a thing. You don't get to just push it onto the ground, okay? I, I do it tonight when big dogs here. You don't get to push big dogs onto the ground, all right? From here, cover your face tight, pause. If I was to try and push this, yes, I could, I guess, eventually get that. She's going to be moving and doing things the entire time. There's no way I'm going to be able to put my weight on there and push it to the ground and pan and execute this. What I want from you guys is a little bit of a dance move, okay? Get into your nice and solid, okay? I don't get to push with my hands. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little monkey grip and a hook. The opposite arm goes to the opposite arm. I'm going to drive my elbow down to the ground. There. If their face is in the way, good. <laughs> That's, it doesn't stop anything. The elbow hits the face on the way through. So remember when we did this, relax please. When we pin here, we put our elbow tight to the neck to hold. All you're doing is putting your elbow tight to the neck 
to hold. Okay, so one time with your partner, smack them in the face a little bit. Pause here. Make a hook with your hand. Let your elbow sink. Now, the most common mistake here, be strong. I don't push with my forearm. I'm not pushing a false. I'm not sink all the way down. Someone is calling the guys and it's Jack Tow. Who would have thought? Oh. Sorry, Jack. I have no idea what I'm doing with this stuff. One more time, please. Trust me, he will call again. Pause here. You're going to be solid for your partner. Your partner is solid. You're not going to be pushing the arm across. You're going to be letting your elbow sink down. If it clips your partner, good. Go slow. Now, remember that this is going to end up being a monkey grip, okay? Because what happens if they want to straighten their arm? It straightens out into the grip. Now from here, shovel, lock it on, and bend it, okay? Now, essential detail for this, we do not have to pin the knuckles to the ground. If the arm is out and wild when doing things, just bend it the wrong way, it breaks, okay? We don't have to be so retentive about this. Bend things the wrong way, sooner or later, they break. So again, smack in the face, pause. Monkey grip, elbow slides down, your partner's gonna be strong with their arm, so you can't push. You're gonna let it sink and sink and sink. Now, even if she doesn't run, it's still there. Good, run, good, good. Now, what I want from you is to practice that application a couple of times. Then we're gonna talk about base, because right here, it's precarious. If we stay on our knees and we put all our weight over here, it's very easy to bridge us. So we're gonna to have to make sure that when we do this, we have solid base, and we'll talk about that at the end. Right now, we're gonna swap roles, and you're gonna hurt. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, how do we look on the camera? You good? Okay. So you need to get my hands up. Ah, <laughs> you know how to do this very well. Ah, good. Let's go really slow for the students. She's gonna touch the face. When she touches the face, she doesn't even have to slap me. She could just do an inappropriate face touch, and my hands are gonna go. Ah, God, why? Pause here. You never ever use the same side arm. Thing, for the love of God. You don't use the same side arm. It doesn't do anything. Always use the opposite side arm. And now from here, continue to push. Yes. Again, continue to push. It's just my face in the way. Yes. Good. Lock it on. Yes. And bend things the wrong way until I say sorry. Good. Now remember, you don't necessarily have to break this person's shoulder. This could just be you talking to them. Ask me, what, all right, I don't want any trouble. Yeah, don't look at me like that. How would you totally do that? No, we didn't need the dishes. <laughs> I don't do this. <laughs> okay, so now what we've done, I've gone on the basic application and the angle for this. Won't you swing too fast? We're going to go over the basic. I've gone over the basic application of this and the basic setup, boom, to lock this in. Now, when it's locked in, what I need you to understand is that you have overcompensated something. Take your right hand and put your thumb in my armpit. Pause. I want you to bridge your hips and push. I'm never going to be able to hold on to that. Hold on to that hand on the bottom. Okay? Now, a uh, common mistake is people will hold on to this and they'll be on the bottom thinking that they have to say it's not. You don't get to do this lock from on your back in the closed guard. Okay? Because they can just sit up. So from here, what I want from you is to find your base. Do me a favor, let's turn this way. Pay attention to this knee, okay? When I elbow, mat, lock it up from here, my knees are evenly distributed. It's 50-50, but I've got way too much weight over here. Actually, I don't think you can see it, all right? Let's do the other side. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to see that knee sinking, but you will be able to see this knee Basic, okay? So what I want from you is if you're pinning on this side, let your partner put a thumb in your armpit, slow motion, start to bridge and push. Yes, I'm gonna have to let go. From here, what I want from you is this. You're gonna slide your foot out, just like you did with that windshield wiper for the warm-up. Slide your foot out, and now slide your knee up, okay? So you're building a little frame. My weight is even between my knees, 50 and 50. Right now, if I do this, all my weight went into my left leg and got heavy. You can slide a piece of paper underneath my knee, but now just push. 
Yeah, I'm solid now, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Push. I'm not solid. What I want from you, once you've done the application a few times, start with your partner from the mouth, lock on the Americana. And the same side as the Americana, your foot slides out, active toes, and you're just going to lift your knee off the mat a tiny bit. Okay? Your partner can give you that push again. Go. Good. Now, over time, we can overdo this because what if Elisa was like three Elisas and really angry with a lot of coffee? You know, push again. I need to be here now. Okay? My weight and my angle has shifted depending on the size of the partner. So we can make this more complicated with time. But what I want you to understand is that you don't put a hook in and you don't lay on your side to finish off an Americana. You find base and you evenly distribute your weight. One more time, head towards the camera, please. Pause here. Touch the face. Elbow, monkey grip. You're going to slide. Hopefully, you clip them in the face. You get extra points for that. Lock it in. And now from here, foot comes out, knee comes up, break. Okay? And it should be very fast. When you want to test your partner's base, bridge really high. Ah, I'll lose it. Push me to the side. Ah, I'll lose it. Breathe really high. Push me to the side. Yes. Okay. You can test your partner. Now, what I mean by base? Hop up, please. When I'm here, like a kitchen table, I have four posts. Just to commit my weight to one side, I have three posts. Now, from here, what I need to do is evenly distribute weight. My foot's going to come out. My knee's going to come up. Now, I'm heavy on this specific angle. What I want you guys to practice, do it with no base and feel yourself get pushed. Then eventually, put a little bit of weight back. Then sooner or later, that shoulder came with me for that lock, okay? So eventually it's gonna look like this. Boom. That's the Americana. Not, never gonna get Now, just because I have time, because it's 12.30 now, we can add on to this. We'll do the neck hook variation, and then I'm going to show why to not put hooks in and not switch the hair. Instead, find your base. So, I want you to lay down one more time. Actually, you know what? Let's test your base first. So, we're good. All right. Here. Yes, good. Locking in. Pause. Keep your knee on the ground. Feel this. You feel it. Take your knee off of the ground. You feel that. Pause here. Your butt's going really hot. No, pause here. No, pause. Yeah, your butt's really high in the air. Keep your butt low. Lift your knee. Yes, yes. You feel the difference. Your butt doesn't get your butt in the air. You feel how your weight's going this way? Yeah. Good. Keep your butt low. Lift your knee. Yes. Yes, and when I bridge, put your weight down in your butt. Yes. Now, slide off into the side. Good. Oh, yeah, these butt details. Good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, do the butt thing again. So, yes. Ah, oh, you clipped me too. Yeah. <laughs> That's in the mouth. All right. Now, too high. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Down, knee. Don't let me run. Yes. Now, a huge detail on this. Lock that in. Pause. Relax. Monkey grip. Good. If I straighten out my arm, stay with it. Yes. So don't even resist it and try and stop me. Break my arm now. Tap. Even if I try to straighten my arm, okay. the way you're holding, right now it's still an Americana. Okay. The Americana doesn't have to look like this. It doesn't have to look like it does in videos. It doesn't have to look like it does in a textbook. It is not a specific 90 degree angle. If I do this, two hands, just keep bending it. Tap. Mm -hmm. That's still a thing. Mm -hmm. Make sense? You're a black belt. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Ow. Oh. Okay. So the last thing I want to do, we'll do the neck hug variation, and then I will waffle on about why we do it like this. Lay down, please. Head towards the camera. Bring your hair time next time. Yeah, I hate it. All right, so from here, 
Okay, so when we establish mount, and in later classes, we're going to go into heavy detail as to how we hold mount and what we do with it. But for now, when I'm in mount, there is the tendency for someone to push you away or push you off into a side. So we need to understand that if I get pushed to a side, I'm not going to put my hands over here and go, no, I want you to hug the head. Okay, so do me a favor and push me to the left. <laughs> yeah, the moment. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna hug the head and post the hand. Good. To the right. I'm gonna hug the head and post the hand. Now the lower I get, push me to the side. I hug the head, I post the hand. Again, I hug the head, I post the hand. My hand can come up underneath for all these things. I don't necessarily have to grab the head. I could slide up underneath and stay a bit lower for control left and right. So this is actually a perfect example of a neck hug variation of Americana. Because if she was to push me in this direction, pause. When I say push, don't push like this. Push me to the side. Yes. Maybe you can't bench press, but maybe you can push me off. Okay. Yes. Push. Yes. Good. Other direction. Yes. Good. Other direction. Yes. Good. Now, we're here. That was the explanation of why we're here. I'm hugging the hand and I'm posting the hand. Now from here, how did we set up the last American? Perfect. The hand comes up. Now from here, I'm going to pin and pass. Okay? So again, I'm touching the face and giving her a wet willy until the hand comes up. Pause here. I'm going to C-clamp. I'm going to pin the wrist to the ground. And then I'm going to monkey grip that wrist. I never hold with a C-clamp straight in your arm. Ah. Monkey grip. Now, again, just like before, I have a shovel so I don't break my fingers doing this. I come in, I lock it up. Now the Americana is locked on. The thing with this is, my elbow needs to be on the other side, and a lot of people try and rush to get the elbow to the other side. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna hold, I'm gonna add a lot of weight until they move. When they move, then I'll put the Americana on, okay? So again, we're hugging the head, posting the hand. Touch the face until the hand comes up. Pin, pass, Shovel. Now from here, I'm just going to be uncomfortable and annoying until they try and move and do things. Do things. Can't do there it is. There it is. There it is. And I got to take some care with it. All right. Was all and all comfortable. That is perfect. Okay. So again, if I ended up having to hug the head for any reason, pause. Touch the face. Pin. Pass. When we pin and pass, it's monkey grip and a shovel to come underneath. Now from here, the perfect climbing here, the moment they're starting to move, let your elbow slide out, touch against the neck, lift the knee, put the breath, yes. <laughs> okay, you do it to me. Try not to pull my hair out. Good? Okay. You need to get better now. Yes, yes, all is here. If I push you off into the side, yes, post your hand. Good. If I push you off into the side, yes, post your hand. If I push you off into the side, yes. Now sit up straight a little bit. Relax, let go. If I push you off into the side, you can hug the back of my head with your hand and post. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, you can hug the back of my yes. head with your hand. And you can post, yes. Now if I did this, yes, good. See how you're getting a little lower and a little harder every time, perfect. Now if I did this, touch my face. Ah, now pin, now pass, shovel. Now from here, stay where you are, you don't have to. Can you get your arm out? No. It's hard to do, what about now? Yes, 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 100%. So okay. take your time when you have it locked on and you don't have to try and do things. Let the other person be in pain so that you ugh, get to do things easily. There's never a point in time when you're doing jujitsu that your partner should be comfortable. That's a, that's a huge thing for me to say because you'll have a lot of schools where they ah, keep it playful and be nice and flow. And yes, you can. But if you're actually going to be using jujitsu, that other person should be so uncomfortable. All the time. There should never be a spot where like, yeah, I can start to do a frame. I'll do that thing that I was thinking about doing in last class. Nope. The whole time, there should be like shoulder and your eye socket and a slightly uncomfortable. Oh, God. Ah, yeah. That'll be for later classes, though, when you're sparring. 
But for now, let's treat everything we did today like a dance move, okay? I'm gonna fix the camera up, and what I want you to do is I want you to cover the distance. Wow, you are tired already? <laughs> no. We're going to cover the distance, three steps, cover and clinch. She's gonna do what's called a body fold takedown, which we'll be teaching in the next few classes. From the body fold takedown, she's gonna establish the mount, and she's gonna do an Americana. Okay. Yeah, you got this, I believe in you. Do I need the belt? No, you don't need the belt, you're okay. Woo. Okay. So again, let me fix this up. Yes, you will. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's over here. Two hands distance. Good. One. Two. Three. Cover and place. Body full take down. Yep. Perfect. Pause. Let's get back on the camera. Good body full take down. Now what? Yep. Yep. Good. You see that again? The, the whole thing again. Let's swap this. Let's go over here. Come back to me. On the third. One. You're taking me no, down. you're going to take me down to a body full take down. One, two, three, boom. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> you done? Okay. Body full takedown. The moment we do the body full takedown, the first thing we're doing is we're touching the face. Locking it in and finishing it off. Stand up for me, kids. We cover the distance. We get into the clinch. Body full takedown. Mount. Touch the face. Can you see Americana? Okay. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Stand up. Four days. <laughs> You're doing great. It's a test. Yeah, that's good. You suck. Come back over here. Pause. Slow motion. One, two, cover, clinch. Perfect. Find the tailbone. Pause here. Straighten down your arms. Head goes between your legs. Start to walk forward. Yes. Let go. Yes. Perfect. That's right, face. Finish. Yes. Finish. Yes. Yes. That's very good. Ish. That was good enough. I'll deal with it. Right. Okay. So that is your second class. Distance management tools, followed by the basic application of the Americana from the mouth. Now, again, in later classes, we're going to go over how to achieve a body fold takedown, especially little strikes are being thrown. Okay? From here, what I want is I've got 10 minutes and uh, I, I want to just prove a point. Do me a favor, hop on top of the mountain, and we'll do it on a couple of different angles. And we'll do it right here. Really, Gemma? Can yeah. you see? Yeah. Scoot. Okay. Now, if she was to lock this, actually, lock on this side. If she was to lock this on, yes. If she has nothing and no base, I can push her off, okay? So in some schools of thought, straighten this leg out. Put your hip on the ground. Yes. Now she has good base. She has a lot of weight on this side. Look what happened over here. Her knee came up. I'm not close. Yeah, okay. So pause. It's very easy for me to take her back, okay? Come back, lock that off. Now, instead of that, I want you to hook this leg. Yes, so now you have a hook. That means this knee came up. But now, if you have that hook, if I put my hand here and I untie, I can still pull onto your back, okay? Yes, all right. So that's two reasons why we stay where we are. Lock that in, stay where you are, just lift the knee off the ground. The other knee. <laughs> Butt stays low. Good. Pause where you are. This is going to be harder for me to deal with because of the weights. Do you understand? Yeah. Let your butt sink back, finish the lock. I can't untie this. I can't slide underneath this. The hook is not necessary. Okay? Time. Let's swap. Actually, uh, let's just change angles. 
Now, the reason why we set up like this, if my hands are up, I want you to push my wrist to the ground. Pause. I'll take two hands, push my wrist to the ground. Yes, come back. Push my wrist to the ground. It's not a thing, is it? Put a hand here, pause. I can just push it off. Okay. Now from here, if you did push it to the ground, come up underneath. Yeah. It's hard to do, isn't it? Okay. I'm just putting my weight from my foot into my elbow. Do that again. Come up underneath. If she does manage to get up underneath, she still has no base. What I want from you guys is here. Use your elbow this time. Nothing is on the ground. Lock it up. It's over. My hands can still be up. I didn't have a chance to change the weight. And you don't have a hook in for me to do anything with. Okay? So we're going to find the middle, and we're going to find our base, and then we're going to add weight. That's what I want from you guys for an Americana. Huh? Yeah. Huh? All right. We're okay. We started early. We'll end it early. Actually, you know what? Why don't we see if I have any questions? Yeah, good. You do you. I think they're not ah, helping. They're not helping. Christ, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, hang on one second. I'll take you guys off of mute. Uh, no, they're they're all on mute, dude. Yeah, but they can unmute themselves if they want. All right, anybody got any questions? Um, well, hey, hey, how's it going? There? How's it going? Um, will we be refreshing this like in person? God, yes, every day for the rest of your life. Yeah. The Gracie <laughs> fundamentals we will cycle through repetitively. On the email that I sent out today, there is a syllabus list. Every time you come to the class, you're going to repetitively do, be doing these 23 classes until you don't suck. I've done awesome. like three times. You can't tell, okay. but I teach. <laughs> oh. so That's perfect for me. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't worry. All right. Is there any more questions? About anything? I don't mind. No. All right. Anybody else? Um, oh, um... Are you here permanently? Yes, sir. I did, yeah, okay. I don't know if you were just staying until I want to take you up away from getting fired. No. <laughs> Get fired, then you guys are going to have to deal with this all over again with somebody else. Until then, I'm here. I live here now, and I'll be teaching here every day. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Can't wait. All good. Looking forward. Awesome. Can't wait to have you guys back on the mats. So sooner or later, no, I can't wait. <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> sooner or later, we'll get to open up the doors and we'll start classes. So the plan is live Zoom classes every day. So we're going to do Monday through Friday and we'll do a breathing seminar on Saturday as well. Okay. Um, Zoom classes, 12 o'clock and five o'clock. And then next week, we're going to add on Zoom kids classes. And then the following week, depending on how well things are going with COVID, we're going to start doing grappling dummy movement classes. So it's not going to be necessarily an exercise class, but more of a foundations and base and structure class. So we'll be doing that for about a week until we can implement some small group classes. And then small group classes will just turn into a party sooner or later. So, All right. Classes. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, All right. If anybody else has any questions, sing out now because you're off mute. <laughs> See you next time. I am leaving. All right. <laughs> I'll be back tonight at five o'clock with Big Dog throwing me around like a rag doll. <laughs> uh, God.